Ionization is the process of removing electrons from atoms. So when we're talking about ionization energy, we're talking about the energy associated with removing electrons from atoms. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about the ionization energy trend. But before we do that, let's focus a little bit on this process of removing electrons from atoms. So just as a refresher, when we have an atom, one of the characteristics of an atom is that the number of protons in the atom is always equal to the number of electrons in that atom. When we remove, electrons from an atom, we create a particle that has an unequal number of protons and electrons. So the number of protons is no longer equal to or not equal to the number of electrons. And when we have a different number of protons than electrons, we can no longer call that particle an atom. So now instead we call it an ion. In the case of ionization, where we are removing electrons from our atoms, in that situation, we specifically have a greater number of protons than electrons because we're taking electrons away. So when we have an ion that has more protons than electrons, we can call that type of ion a cation. That's pronounced cation, not cation. It's cation like kitty cat. A cation is just a type of ion. So whether we have more protons or whether we have more electrons, we're always going to refer to it as an ion. When we have more protons than electrons, we can either call it an ion or we can be very specific and we can call it a cation. Let's look at an example of this. So let's say that we have magnesium as an atom. And if we were to go look at the periodic table, we would see that magnesium as an atom has 12 protons. And that means as an atom, magne magnesium also has 12 electrons. As an ion, so when magnesium becomes an ion, it still has 12 protons because 12 protons is what makes this particle magnesium. So the number of protons isn't changing, but it doesn't have 12 electrons anymore. Instead, it only has 10 electrons. So it's actually had two of its electrons removed. In the magnesium ion, because we have 12 protons, we only have 10 electrons. We have 12 positively charged particles, but we only have 10 negatively charged particles. As a result, this magnesium ion is a charged particle, and its charge is plus 2. Again, that is because it has 12 positively charged particles, but only 10 negatively charged particles. So the positively charged particles outnumber the electrons by two, and that's where we get the charge. We cannot symbolize the magnesium ion with Mg anymore. The symbol for the magnesium atom is Mg, and when we just use the letters Mg, that definitely communicates we're talking about an atom. So when we're talking about the magnesium ion, we'll use the atomic symbol Mg, but we'll indicate that it is an ion by writing its charge in the upper right-hand corner. So in this position right here, we write the charge. Now notice that I write the magnitude followed by the sign that is convention in the United States. We write the magnitude first and then the sign of the charge following. So we give it a different symbol just to communicate that it is an ion and not an atom. And we also have to give it a different name. We can't call it magnesium because the word magnesium is used to describe the atom where protons are equal to electrons. We cannot call this magnesium because that means even number of protons and electrons. So instead, we call this guy magnesium ion. We don't have to say anything in the name that indicates that it's a plus two ion. We can just say that it is the magnesium ion. When magnesium ionizes, even though it's losing two electrons, it loses those two electrons one at a time. So the first thing that happens is that the magnesium atom loses one of its electrons. I'm going to write it like that. And when it loses one of its electrons, its charge becomes a plus one, which we could, some, we could indicate just a positive sign, or we could say one plus like that if we wanted to. One plus. So this is just showing a magnesium atom turning into a magnesium ion with one electron. And then that magnesium ion, which really has a preference for a two plus charge, the magnesium ion loses a second electron. So here it's giving off electron number two, and that brings it to a two plus charge. 
The energy associated with removing the first electron is referred to as the first ionization energy. I'm going to use the letters IE to abbreviate ionization energy. So again, the energy associated with removing electron number one, we call the first ionization energy. And the energy associated with removing electron number two, we call the second ionization energy. So this is a two-step process, and each process has its own ionization energy. When we are talking about the trend of ionization energies, for all of the atoms, we are specifically only looking at the trend of the energy associated with the first ionization process. So again, when we're comparing ionization energy from one atom to another, we're actually only comparing the first ionization energy of one atom to another. Let's sketch a periodic table. So this, as if you've been watching my videos, you know that this is my shorthand for periodic table or the periodic table. I'm just, instead of representing it with its actual shape, I'm just representing it as a rectangle. The trend for ionization energy follows the trend for effective nuclear charge, which means that as you go up a column, the ionization energy increases. And as you go from left to right across a row, ionization energy increases as well. So let's write this down. Ionization increases as we go up and to the left. And again, this is because we are following the effective nuclear charge, ZEFF or ENC, depending on which abbreviation you like to use. And this should make sense to you because remember, effective nuclear charge is our measure of how tightly an atom is holding on to its electrons. And so if an atom is holding an electron very tight, this process of letting one of its electrons go is going to be quite difficult. So the stronger of an attraction that an atom has for its an electron, the harder it will be for it to let that electron go. So we're going to add that note because electrons that are held tight and that is corresponding to a high effective nuclear charge, electrons that are held tight, high, held tight take high energy to remove. So this means that if we're comparing this atom to this atom right here and asked which one has the higher ionization energy, this atom up here has the highest ionization energy, this one has the lowest ionization energy, and it goes from low to high sequentially. Or if we're looking at a row, this atom over here has the highest ionization energy, this one has the lowest ionization energy, and it uh, increases as we go across the row. However, there are two exceptions to this. So there are, we're going to make a note with two exceptions to this trend. The trend with exceptions is the left to right trend. Two trends, um, two exceptions to this trend, which I'm going to describe in the next video.